I'm confused, but I feel all warm inside. Let me explain. Welcome back, and once again, thank you for trusting me with your full spoiler movie reviews. That thing I do where I watch movies early, and then I tell you all about them. As always, I am unpaid and unsponsored. And spoilers. Spoilers, 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 all the spoilers. All right, let's go. This is If by John Krasinski. Not to be confused with the imaginary movie from Blumhouse that just came out, which you could probably still take your small child to see because it wasn't really scary. But don't quote me on that one. Anyway. So there's a 12-year-old girl named B. She had fairly recently lost her mother due to some kind of illness. And now her dad is in the hospital getting ready to have surgery. They don't say specifically what it was, but they keep saying his heart is broken, so I'm assuming cardiothoracic. Except he's never on any kind of monitors. And he has to stay at the hospital for like days prior to the surgery. But we'll come back around to that. So she's staying with her grandma and all of a sudden she starts seeing like imaginary friends everywhere, right? And so she follows them up to this apartment where uh, Ryan Reynolds lives in there with the imaginary friend. And come to find out these are imaginary friends that don't have kids anymore because their kids grew up. And now they live at the retirement home for imaginary friends that's inside of a carousel at Coney Island. Well, she's decided she's going to find them new kids. Candy, this sounds particularly like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Almost, but not really. So she starts getting all the information for all the imaginary friends, you know, their names, where they come from, what they are, what they do, things like that. And she goes to one particular kid in the hospital she's made friends with to see if he wants a new imaginary friend. And he couldn't see any of them, because nobody can actually see them, sort of, yet. And she's getting really upset because none of them seem to have a home yet because she only tried one child. But then we figure out that the imaginary friends can go back to their original friend as long as you make the friend see that they're still there. Because grown-ups forget. So you have to trigger memories, you know, whether it be sound or smell or things like that. And I guess imaginary friends are locally based because all the imaginary friends she, like, talked to and stuff were basically able to find their kids by the end. Well, then it comes the day of her dad's surgery, and apparently something happened. He wasn't waking up. She gets to the hospital. He wasn't in ICU, but he just wasn't waking up. Presumably, he didn't do well with the anesthesia or something. That happens. But then she also hugs him, which I was kind of worried about because, you know, cardiothoracic surgery, there's going to be a whole open, gaping wound in your chest. You should probably not hug bad, but, you know, it's a sweet moment. I'm not going to think too hard in that one. And come to find out, Ryan Reynolds, who she's been talking to this whole time, is her old imaginary friend who was a clown named Cal. And I think a lot of it has to do with, like, suppressed emotions, trying to be big, brave, and strong because, you know, she just lost her mom. She feels like she's about to lose her dad. And, you know, she's 12 and there's all this other stuff going on and she's trying to be very stoic about it. But eventually you gotta let it go. You gotta... You can't not think about things, you know? Eventually it's gonna come... It's gonna hit you like a freight train. Or at least I think that's the message. That's what I got out of it. But everybody's okay. Everybody finds their people. John Krasinski's okay. The end. Now, did I like it? It's cute. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't think this is meant for, like, really small children. I mean, like, the little imaginary friend guys are definitely for small children, but the actual, like, story itself is a little complex. Like, you figure 12, 13, 14, you might be okay. Even down to about 10, but, like, anything uh, under 10 is, I think it's going to be too much. Or too confusing, I might say. Also, I kind of thought because Ryan Reynolds was, like, a human, her imaginary friend was human, I thought maybe she was experiencing some limerence. Maybe this is the imaginary version of her dad, or, like, someone she knew. Guess not, though. So, with all that taken into account, I'm going to give it, like... 7 out of 10. Like, it was okay. It wasn't my favorite thing in the world, but it was, it was cute. So 7 out of 10. Okay, bye. Ooh, you're my best friend.